everybody uh, this is recorded lecture for topic 9 um, I do this recorded lecture because uh, we have cancelled sev uh, several classes uh, because uh, there are several uh, public holiday on Mondays so I did this this topic is not a very long topic and I think uh, it can be understood easily even though it is done the lecture is done by using uh, recording like this okay so the topic is topic 9 the title of this topic is financial statement analysis okay let's see this Okay, what is financial statement analysis? First, you have to remember about financial statement. Remember that financial statement is the output of financial accounting. You have learned about financial accounting. You have learned about how to record the transaction in the journal, the ledger, and then prepare trade balance, etc. So, the, the output of the process of financial accounting is the financial statement. The financial statement contains uh, income statement, balance sheet, and uh, several other reports. So, if you see uh, an income statement, you will see whether the business is making profit or loss. And in accounting, if you see a business is making profit, then in general, you can say that the business is performing well. The, the business is performing well. And then when you look at the balance sheet, if you see uh, that the business has a low amount of debt or liabilities, then you can make a general conclusion that the business is in a good financial condition but these are only general conclusion if you really want to know the performance or how well the business is doing then you have to do financial statement analysis Okay, just like you look, uh, looking at a person. Uh, if a person is wearing uh, clean and smart clothes, the general conclusion that we can make is, okay, that person is a good person. Maybe that is general, the general conclusion. But if we really want to know that person, we have to do some analysis. We have to check his or her background, uh, what he or she is doing now, uh, and other things. We have to do analysis to know the... We have to do an analysis so that we can make a good conclusion about, about the person. So same with a business. When you see the financial statement, you can make general conclusion only. But if you really want to know whether the business is a good business, a doing well business, a good place to invest, then you have to analyze the financial statement. Okay, see here, what the purpose of financial statement analysis? Why people do financial statement analysis? Okay. There are two main reasons why people out there do financial statement analysis. The first is to, to predict future performance of a business. Most of the time, uh, the, the party who will do financial statement analysis is the investor. So investor they want to predict, they do financial statement analysis for a bus, uh, of a business because they want to predict the future of the business. If the business has a good future, then investor will 
uh, invest in that business or purchase shares in that business. For example, there are many inv investors out there. So, one of a uh, popular business in Malaysia is the uh, maybe uh, Selcom. Selcom is the uh, telecommunication business. So, Selcom is one of the most popular business in Malaysia. So, many investors, they will do financial statement analysis. Uh, they will analyze the financial statement of Selcom. The main reason is they want to check the future of Selcom. Uh, of Selcom. If Selcom has good future, uh, means that Selcom can generate more profit in the future then the investor will invest so that is one one main reason why people do a financial statement analysis to predict the future performance of a business the second reason uh, people out there do financial statement financial statement analysis is to identify problem with a business uh, some businesses uh, have had made losses for several years. So, managers of the business uh, want to know what is the problem. The manager want to solve the problem and make the business profitable. So, one thing that the manager can do to identify problems that happen uh, in a business is by doing financial statement analysis. You will see later after you do financial statement analysis, sometimes you you see that the business is having uh, having like uh, account receivable problem. The business cannot collect account receivable. The business has made sales, but uh, account receivable collection is is not good. So when the business know the problem, then the the problem can be solved and the business. Uh, maybe can be uh, revived. Uh, the business can be profitable after that. Okay, that uh, that are the two main reason why people do financial statement analysis. Remember that. So, who are the people that will do the financial statement analysis? Uh, the people that will do financial statement analysis are called accounting users or financial statement users. I think you have learned about this before. Uh, you have learned that there are two group of financial statement users or accounting users. They are internal users and external users. External users, there are several external users out there, investors, creditors, lenders, uh, they will do financial statement analysis. Investors will do financial statement analysis because they want to make investment decision. Before they invest in a company like Cellcom, for example, they do the financial statement analysis and decide whether to invest in Cellcom, purchase shares in Cellcom or not. Okay, investors. Uh, creditors also will do financial statement analysis. Creditors are mostly sub, uh, suppliers. Before they allow a company to, to purchase uh, things in credit, they will do financial statement analysis first. They analyze the financial statement of the company and then if the company is good, then the creditor will give or allow uh, purchase in credit. Okay. How about lenders? Uh, lenders are uh, banks and financial institutions. They do financial statement analysis. They will give, bis uh, they will give bank loan to a business if they, they find that the business is a good business 
a business that can pay back the loan. So let's say in the future you have a business and then you want to borrow money from bank. Bank is a lender. So most of the time bank will ask you to prepare financial statement and submit to them. Bank will analyze your financial statement and then if they, the bank sees that your business is a good business and can pay back the loan, the bank will approve the loan. Otherwise, the bank will not approve the loan. So it shows that bank is a user of financial statement and bank will analyze financial statement and bank will make lending decision based on the financial statement analysis. And then the second group of people who will analyze financial statement is called internal users. Internal users are people inside the business. Most of the time when we say internal users, we refer to managers. You can imagine that if you are a manager, uh, you have to do many things and then mainly you have to manage your business or your department. So one of the things that a manager will do is they analyze the financial statement of their business or their department. They analyze the financial statement uh, to know about the business, to identify problem or to predict the future of the business or department and they will they will make business decision. They will make business decision. There are many business decisions. For, for example, pricing decision, uh, decision whether to open a new branch or not, decision whether to purchase machine or to hire more workers. There are many decisions. So managers, they do financial statement analysis uh, because they uh, want to make they want to make business decision. So different user will have different purposes uh, when they do the financial statement analysis. Investor do it because they want to make investment decision lender do it because they want to make lending decision creditors do it because they want to make a credit decision managers do it because they want to make business decision there are several more uh, financial statement users and they also make different decision uh, you can check them in the e-textbook okay so there are several methods that can be used to analyze financial statement. In this course, you will learn, you will see three methods. The first method is called horizontal analysis. So see here the definition of horizontal analysis, the percentage analysis of increases and decreases in related items in comparative financial statement is called horizontal analysis. So, Horizontal analysis, you have to imagine a horizontal line. You know horizontal line? So, okay, horizontal line is like uh, straight line in the horizon. Horizon. So, horizontal line is, so if you have to do a horizontal analysis, then you have to do this. You have to have uh, two years data, current year, uh, data and previous year data. So in this example, see here in this uh, balance sheet, if you want to do horizontal analysis on a balance sheet, then you have to have two years data. In this example, data from 2000X2 and 2000X1. And then you have to, to, uh, to develop uh, two more columns. First, you have to show the different of the data in term of amount and the different of the data in term of percentage. See here in this example, the current asset in year 2000X2, the current asset for this business is 550,000. In year 2000X1, the current asset is 533,000. That data are coming from the the balance sheet of the business. So when you do the analysis, you have to calculate 
to create the two column for amount and percent percentage and then you calculate the amount and percentages for in uh, for example for the current asset the difference is 17000 in term of amount and in term of percentage the difference is uh, 3.2% how to calculate that okay so to calculate that uh, 17000 is easy uh, the current asset increased by 17,000. To calculate the percentage, uh, you use the difference in term of amount, 17,000, divided by the base year. Base year is the previous year. So in this sample question, the base year is 503,000. So it is 3.2% difference. Okay, same thing for every item. Uh, so that is the way to do the what the horizontal analysis on a balance sheet I don't have to worry about this let's see how to do horizontal analysis on the income segment okay this is the way to do the uh, horizontal analysis on an income segment same thing, you have to have two years data, current year data, current year income segment and uh, last year income segment. And then you create two more columns. One column for the difference in amount, increase or decrease. And then uh, another column is for, uh, see here, for percentage. How many percent uh, the amount has increased or how many percent the amount has decreased. For example here, for the sales, the difference is 296,500. The percentage difference is 24%, increase 24%. When the amount is positive, then it is an increase. When the amount is negative, it, uh, it is a decrease. For example, there is a decrease in sales return and allowance. Okay. So you have to know how to do it on the in uh, income segment and balance sheet after you do the analysis uh, you can uh, uh, investigate why there are differences in the amount okay this is easy this is this is the question you have two years data for cash and then the question asks you, uh, what is the amount and percentage of increase or decrease that will be shown in the balance sheet with horizontal analysis? So easy. You create two columns. And then you can see that the, the increase in cash is 12,500 or 25%. For account receivable, there is a decrease of 5,600 or a negative 7%. Okay, the second method that can be used to do financial statement analysis is called vertical analysis. Vertical analysis, uh, see here the definition, a percentage analysis used to show the relationship of each component to the total within a single statement. Vertical analysis, imagine a vertical line. Okay, you. I hope you can imagine a vertical line. So that is the way to do the analysis. So this is... The example of how to do uh, vertical analysis uh, on a balance sheet. So if you have to do the vertical analysis, then you have to have at least also uh, one year data is possible. Uh, but two years data is, uh, is good for making comparison. So in this uh, example here, you can see there are two years data. 2 years uh, balance sheet, 2000x2 and 2000x1. First, you have to show the amount from the balance sheet and then you have to calculate the percentage. The percentage is, first, when you want to calculate the percentage, make sure the total asset is always 100%. Uh, in, remember the format of a balance sheet. First, you have to list all the total asset in the... Uh, left side of the balance sheet in the right side of the balance sheet you have to show the total uh, liabilities and equity so use total asset 
less 100%. See in this example here. Uh, when you put 100%, total asset equal to 100%, then you can calculate how much or how many percent is current asset, how many percent is long-term investment, how many percent or is for property and how many percent for intangible asset so you can calculate the percent the percentage and then for the second part of the balance sheet liabilities and equity uh, put the total of the liability and equity as 100 percent then you can calculate how much uh, how, how many percent is uh, for current liabilities how many percent is for Retain earnings. Retain earnings are uh, uh, profit from the profit uh, made by the business. Okay, so that's the way to do it. Yeah, see, this is vertical line, vertical analysis. And then after that, after you have converted the number in terms of percentages, then you can uh, see the difference and make good conclusions about the business. Okay, this is the um, vertical analysis for uh, sorry for what for an income statement. Okay, for an income statement, uh, when do you do the vertical analysis, the net sales is always one hundred percent. The net sales is always one hundred percent. Net sales equal to sales minus sales return. Uh, and allowance okay so when you put net sales as 100% you can calculate percentages for other items for example here net sales is 100% for year 2000x2 uh, the net income or net profit is 6.1% so how to calculate the 6.1% 91,000 divided by net sales 1.4 Nine eight million, you will get six point one percent. Other items also have to be compared to the net sales. Okay, so when you do this, uh, you will see the numbers in terms of percentages, and then you can make comparison and you can make con good conclusion. For example, here you can see here, uh, for this business. In year 2000X2, the cost of goods sold is 69.6%. But in year 2000X1, the cost of goods sold is only 68.3%. So, the situation is getting better or not? Maybe not. And then, see here. See, see the other thing. Uh, selling expense. And then admin expense. Income from operation. See here. Uh, or easier uh, easier to, to to compare is the gross profit. See here. The gross profit in year 2000X2, the gross profit is 30.4%. The gross profit in year 2000 X1 is 31.7%. So, it shows that the business is not getting better. It's getting worse in uh, generating gross profit. Uh, and then when you say net income or net profit, also the same thing. In year 2000 X2, the business uh, net income is only is 6.1%. In year 2000 X1, the... Net income or net profit is 6.4%. So, the thing that you can make, the conclusion that you can make is like this. See, even though the sales of the business has increased uh, from 1.234 million to 1.530 million, and also the, the dollar profit is increased from $76,500 to $91,000, the business is actually is not uh, performing well. Because in year 2000X2, even though the sales is, is lower and the profit is lower, 
but the percentage of profit is 6.4%. In the two, uh, year 2000X2, uh, the dollar of the profit is in increase, but the percent is only 6.1%. So we cannot say the business is getting better uh, because the percentage is getting lower. Okay. This is the most important financial statement analysis method uh, I have this I have told you bef uh, before in the previous slide there are at least three methods that can be used to do financial statement analysis the first method is horizontal analysis and then the second method is vertical analysis and then this is the third method the third method is financial ratio analysis you do financial statement analysis using ratios this is very important. Everybody has to know this. I think most of you have learned ratios in mathematics. Uh, ratios is calculated by comparing two numbers. So, there are many ratios that can be used to calculate or to analyze financial statement. But in this course, I think... Uh, the minimum that you have to know is only six ratios if i'm not mistaken six ratios if you read textbook there are hundreds of ratios actually too many ratios can be used but in this course you will learn six basic ratios okay the first ratio is called debt ratio this debt ratio measure is a measure of leverage uh, it measures how much borrowed money is used by a business to to grow and to make profit okay how much leverage or loan or borrowed money is used by a business to grow and make profit okay the the formula to calculate debt ratio is here uh, is written in blue letters the formula to calculate debt ratio is total liabilities over total asset. You can find the total liability data and total asset data in the balance sheet of the business. So, the general rule is if a, a, a all business has to have uh, have to have at least fifty percent. So. If a business has debt ratio of more than 50%, we say that the business is not good in term of uh, it's not good in term of debt. The business has too many debts. If you calculate debt ratio for a company or a business, then you you see that the business has debt ratio of more than 50% then in accounting we say that the business is not good because the business is making too many debts if the uh, debt ratio is less than 50% then it is good for this debt ratio the higher the debt ratio of a business the worse the business in terms of using debt okay let's say you compare two business two businesses Business A and Business B. Business A, the debt ratio is 40%. Business B, the debt ratio is 48%. So, you can make conclusion that Business A is better compared to Business B in terms of using debt to manage business or to operate its business. But, let's say, you compare two businesses, Business D and business E. Business D has debt ratio of 51%. Business D has sorry, business D has debt ratio 51%. Business E has debt ratio 58%. Which business is better? Both business are not good because both business debt ratio is more than 50%. 
if a business has that ratio of more than 50% in accounting, we say that this business is not good in terms of using debt or liabilities to manage or to continue to operate. Remember that? And then the second ratio that you have to know is called current ratio. Current ratio uh, measures the liquidity of a business. Liquidity means how good the business. Uh, sorry, liquidity means uh, whether the business has sufficient cash to pay uh, debts or not. Whether uh, liquidity means uh, the ability of a business or the amount of cash a that a business has and its ability to pay back uh, loan or liabilities. Uh, liquid current ratio also known as working capital ratio. And the formula to calculate the current ratio is total current asset of the business divided by total current liabilities. So, the higher the... Uh, sorry. If a business has high current ratio, it shows that the business has high ability to pay back bank loan or other liabilities. So, let's say you calculate... Uh, liquidity ratio for business A and B. Business A has 30% uh, current ratio. Business B has 50% current ratio. So it shows that business B has higher uh, liquidity compared to business A or the business B has higher ability to pay back bank loan and other liabilities compared to business A. The higher the liquidity ratio, the better, sorry, the higher the uh, current ratio, the better the business in terms of ability to pay short, uh, to pay uh, loan or other liabilities. Okay, and then the, the third ratio that I think you have to know is called the return on sales ratio. Return on sales ratio measures the amount of profit earned per dollar of sales. And it is evaluated within the appropriate industry. So how to calculate return on, return on sales ratio? The formula is net income over sales. If, some, if uh, somebody asks you to calculate return on sales ratio for a business, then you use this formula. Uh, net income over sales or net profit over sales and then where to get the net income data and sales data you can get the data from the income statement so it measures the amount of profit earned per dollar of sales so let's say you see you analyze a business and then you found that the the return on sales ratio for that business is zero point uh, 5.3 So you know that for that business for every one dollar the business sell something the business make 53 cent profit uh, So that is a very good business one dollar sales the business can make 53 53 cent profit that is very good business so the higher the return on sales ratio, the better the business in term of ability to generate profit uh, for every dollar of sales. You can compare the data for of, uh, of two companies or, or businesses, company A and B, for example. You, the higher the uh, return on sales ratio, the better the company. Uh, in terms of generating profit in every time the company making sales. Or you can compare data of one company but uh, current year data and 
uh, last year data or previous year data. For example, you analyze company B. So you calculate the current year return on sales ratio is 13%. Last year, return on sales ratio is 10%. So, the conclusion that you can make is the company is getting better. Getting better because last year, the bis every time a business, the business uh, sell something, the business can make 10 cent profit. But this year, current year, every time the company sell something, the, the company can make 13 cent profit. Okay, so you can do or compare one company data, current year and past year data, or you can compare different company data. Company A compared to company B compared to company C. The higher the return on sales ratio, the better the ability of the company to make profit for every dollar of sales. And then the next the next uh, ratio is called asset turnover ratio. Asset turnover ratio me measure the uh, efficiency of a business. So the higher the asset turnover ratio, the more efficient the business in using its asset to generate sales. The higher the asset turnover ratio, the better the business in use, uh, using its asset to generate sales. Let's say you have two businesses. One business has 100,000, uh, business A has 100,000 asset. Business B also has $100,000 asset. But business A, using the $100,000 asset, can generate $150,000 sale. Business B, using $100,000 of asset, can generate $200,000 of sales. Which company is better? Or which business is better? In terms of good in using asset to generate sales. So, you can see that the company is B is better. Because company B, has $100,000 asset but can can sell $200,000 things. Compared to business A, business A has same uh, amount of asset or value of asset but only can sell $150,000 uh, things. So, for if you use asset turnover ratio, the higher the ratio the better the business in term of its efficiency in generating sales. So the formula is sales over uh, total asset. Sales over total asset. And the uh, next one is return on equity ratio. Okay, return on equity ratio measures the performance uh, or the ability of uh, business to generate profit for every one dollar of investment. Equity is remember the definition of equity. Equity is the amount owned by the owner of, of the business in the business. So when you compare profit, see the formula here: profit or net income or net profit divided by the owner's equity. Then you will know. Uh, how many uh, profit the business can make for every dollar of uh, investment made by the owner of the business. So net income over owner's equity. The higher the return on equity ratio for a business, the higher the ability of the business uh, generate profit for every investment made by the owner of the business. So when you start a business, you invest, you put money or capital into the business. So this is the ratio that is that can be used to show whether the, your investment is good or not. 
So if you compare two businesses, uh, business uh, A and B, business a business with highest ROE is good in term of uh, the business ability to make profit. Uh, given uh, to make profit using the equity uh, invested by the the owner of the business okay so uh, if you the general uh, rule that we use in accounting is uh, if you see a business has return on equity ratio between 15 and 25 percent then that business is a good place to invest. If you analyze a, uh, a business and you found that the ROE is less than 15%, so that business is not a good place to invest because too little. You put 10,000 ringgit, you have to take risk because a business can collapse anytime but the return is let's say 12 percent oh that is very low in accounting if the roe is less than 15 percent that is very low but and and at the same time if you if you calculate uh, roe for a business you found that the roe is more than 25 percent let's say 30 percent or 35 percent uh then also uh, you have to be very careful because in accounting uh, when a business uh, make more than 20 percent more than 25 percent roe then we always says in accounting we always say it is too good to be true uh, it means that maybe the company is a, a scam in the future if somebody ask you to invest in one place and the return is more than 25% be very careful because maybe it is a scam uh, because in accounting uh, most of the time even very good business can make only uh, up to 25% 25% return on equity more than 25% maybe most probably it is a scam or scammer this is the price earning ratio price earning ratio is if you want to uh, invest in shares uh, don't have to worry about this because this is ratio that only can be used if you analyze a company financial statement uh, in this course you only learn how to do financial statement for a sole proprietorship but this ratio only can be used for a company the formula is market price per share divided by earning per share. You don't have to worry about this. So, how many uh, ratios that you have learned? Return on sales ratio, asset turnover ratio, yes, asset to no profitability, efficiency, leverage. I think uh, you just see back the slide that we have discussed. Uh, five, at least five ratios only. Debt ratio, current ratio, asset turnover ratio, and what else? Uh, return on equity ratio. Return on sales ratio. Okay. Uh, that are the only five ratios that you have to remember. And no, so you for the ratio, see there, you see here, debt ratio, current ratio, asset turnover ratio, return on sales ratio, and return on equity ratio. You have to know how to calculate these ratios, these five ratios, and also you have to know how to interpret the ratios. Uh, let's say I ask you to compare uh, to calculate ratio for company X and Y. You have to calculate debt ratio for company X and Y. And then you have to know how to calculate the, the ratio. And then after that, you have to know how to interpret the ratio. Uh, so company X better than Y or not? Or Y better than X? Okay. 
Or I can ask you to compare company uh, to calculate uh, debt ratio for company X, but current year debt ratio and last year debt ratio. So you have to know how to calculate the ratio, and then after that you have to know whether the business company X is getting better or not, or getting worse. Okay, that is the way to do it for the ratio. Okay, this is like additional knowledge. You also can analyze financial statement if you convert the data in the income statement or balance sheet into percentages. When you convert the data into percentages, you always can make good uh, something, uh, good analysis. For example, here you can see uh, selling and admin cost is only 15%. Uh, income tax is 10%, so net income 25%, so you can understand better about the data. But Okay, so, what are the limitations of financial statement analysis? You have learned three, three methods that can be used to do financial statement analysis. Uh, horizontal method, vertical method, and uh, ratio analysis method. So we focus on ratio analysis method. Ratio analysis method is a good method. Why it is a good method to to analyze financial statement? Because ratio analysis method is simple. Simple and easy to calculate. Everybody can use ratio analysis. If if a person knows the ratio, then the person can do the analysis and can make Conclusion from the data. So, ratio analysis is easy, simple, and can be done very quickly using formula. But, <clears throat> this uh, ratio analysis has several weaknesses or limitations. Okay, see here. First, the first limitation or weakness of the ratio analysis is financial statement do not contain all the information when you do the ratio analysis you analyze the numbers only but in real situation a business future is not determined by numbers only uh, in the real situation a business future is also determined or affected by external factors like the current economic condition in the country, the location of the business, the customer service. Okay, so that is one limitation. When you do ratio analysis or other financial statement analysis, you use numbers only and you use uh, data from income statement and balance sheet only but in the real situation the future of a business is also determined by factors other than numbers like the uh, the economic condition uh, in a country the customer loyalty location of the business etc okay that is one uh, weakness the second weakness that I think easier for you to remember is the third point here. Lack of comparability between companies. Okay. So I have told you when I explained about the ratio analysis and other analysis, you can compare company A and company B and company C and then make good conclusion which company is better, isn't it? So that is only the general thing. Uh, but in real situation, very difficult to compare between companies because there are no there are no two same company, isn't it? You only can compare if the company are same. Like you only can compare apple with apple, monkey with monkey, car with car. Then you can compare, but you cannot compare apple with lemon. Uh, same with the financial statement analysis. When you want to compare company A and company B, 
very difficult to find two same companies to compare. For example, let's say you want to analyze uh, Cellcom. Cellcom is a telecommunication company. And then you want to compare, do financial statement, statement analysis. You want to compare it with Maxis. Uh, even though you see that Cellcom and Maxis are doing uh, telecommunication business, but they are actually, when you check their, uh, their detail, you will see that Cellcom and Maxis are very different companies. The, the similar part is only small part. They both provide uh, what's uh, data to your smartphone. Data and what audio service, video service to your smartphone. That is the only part. Other than that, they are very different. Uh, so in real situation, when you want to find two companies, very difficult actually. Okay, and then the third thing that I think you easier for you to remember is the fourth point in this slide. Not all problems are readily apparent. Okay, doing financial statement analysis is a good thing. Uh, you can know the actual situation uh, of a business when you do the financial statement analysis. But sometimes you have done all the analysis, everything is good with a company, suddenly problem happen. Uh, unexpected thing can happen. So that's the weakness of doing financial analysis. Sometimes when you do the analysis, everything is fine with a business or company. But after maybe several weeks or several months, something bad happened to the company and the company collapse. Uh, it can happen because some problems are not readily uh, apparent, uh, apparent. Financial statement analysis is based on past performance. That is the last point in this slide. Uh, always remember when you do financial statement, financial statement analysis, it is a good thing to do. But always aware that the analysis that you have done is based on past performance. So let's say you do the financial statement analysis now. Now, um, the date is uh, January 2023. Maybe the data that uh, available to you is data from June 2022. Uh, because uh, a, a company only uh, will uh, produce their financial statement once a year. So when you do the analysis, uh, you you only have old data. You do not have the latest data most of the time. You want to do the analysis now, the only data that you can use is data from June 2022. Sometimes you, you are in the month of August. You want to do the financial statement analysis. The only data that you have is data from the 31st of December in the last year. So that is the thing that can happen. So these are the limitation or weaknesses of financial statement analysis. Thank you very much everybody. Uh, I hope this uh, lecture video helped you. Do not forget to write your name and metric number in the comment section of this video. I will record them as your lecture attendance. This is a replacement lecture.